peace, Father. We thank you for all that you're doing and all that you've done. Lord, we thank you for saving us for such a time as this. Hallelujah. This season of open doors. Mm -hmm. For some it's an open window. For some it's an open door. For all it's an open heaven. Hallelujah. For all it's an open heaven. Of your glory, your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. Just, just being on full display all over the place. Lord, we thank you right now for your cloud of glory and your peace and your love and your joy. Thank you so much, Father God, for the presence of your Spirit. We thank you, Father God, for all that you're doing and all that you've done. And we thank you, Father God, for saving us for such a time as this. Thank you, Father God, for this season of the new and the now. Yes, sir, I hear that. But it's also a season of the new and the first. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. There's some first time things that will happen in this season. For some, it'd be the first time that you're debt free. For others, it'd be the first time you get a, a new, brand new home from the ground up. For some, it'd be the first time shopping at an actual new car dealership. For some, it'd be the first college. It'd be, it, this is a season of new and first. Yes, sir, I get that. And because you're first, don't, don't hesitate stepping through the door. Because if you're first, that means there's somebody in your family, in your circle, in your sphere of influence that's going to be second. But they need you to go first in order to pioneer and pave the way. Be first, be first, be first. Step out, step out, step out. Step out, step out, step out. Yes, yes, yes. And if you're pondering whether God told you or not, take a seat and grab your Bible and open up the Numbers 23 and 19. Hello, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How's everybody doing tonight? Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah again. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. This is a season. This is a season of the new and the first. Wow. This is a season of, of repositioning, but also it's a season of refinement. It's a, it's a, it's a season of, of, of recompense. God is, God is rewarding his faithful saints. Amen, amen. But it's also a season of attack. You know, it, 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 it's like living in the first chapter of the greatest book ever written. Y'all remember that Gone with the Wind? Yeah. The biggest book was the biggest book or the greatest book? Maybe the big biggest book, book. called Gone with. Remember, it's about uh, it's about four or five minutes. Thinking about thinking the two King James about Gone with the Wind, and, and, and Gone with the Wind. If, I'm, if my memory serves me correctly, is it opens up with it was the best. worst of times, and it was the best of times. Now, this is the beauty of God, because God will always give you. Some good times in the middle of some bad times. Oh, yeah. Shoot, boy, I just said it my floor. Oh, see, see, and, and here's the thing. The devil wants to distract you with what's wrong and make you forget what's right. Yes. Pick up what we have our phone on Sunday. And so, the Lord told me to tell you. He said, tell them. It's almost cliche, but he told me to say it again. He said, tell them, don't let what you see, feel, or hear make you forget what he said. Hallelujah. Let me say that again. He told me to tell you. He said, he said, don't let what you see feel. Boy, that feels strong. In fact, right now I just left. There's somebody in the hospital now that I've been praying for. And I pray you're watching this broadcast. You're going home in the morning. You're healed. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. You're healed. In Jesus. Don't let what you, yes, sir. And the reason for the attack is because you're at the brink of your award. Amen. Don't let what you see, feel, or hear make you forget what he said. He always keeps his word. Numbers 23 and 19. We do an Amplified tonight. We do King James and we do an Amplified for the rest of them. It says, God is not a man 
that he should lie. Okay. Well, that's a whole lot back then. Some of the women, I know that's right. Here. <laughs> God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, he shall not, shall he not do it? Get go do it? Shall he not do it? <laughs> or hath he spoken, shall he not make it good? Look at your neighbor and say, God ain't lying. God ain't lying. He ain't playing with you. He ain't playing with you. <laughs> hey, God ain't selling wolf tickets. <laughs> but what you have to do is understand what God is telling you is truth. But the circumstances that you may be dealing with is a fact. But you got to understand that truth overrides facts. Yeah, yeah. Depending upon which one you meditate on and believe in is the one that's going to manifest. Yes, sir. The, the Lord, the Lord told me. He, he said, "Tell them." He said, "Tell them." Yes, sir. He said, "Tell them don't break down before your breakthrough." Amen. See, see the reason why you feel breakdown because you're close to your breakthrough. Oh my goodness! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I feel that right on that cone. Amen. 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 Don't break. See, you got to get. You got to get to the point to where you start correlating. The circumstances that you deal with on a daily since you've been walking with God. And if you look back and think back, you'll see and recognize that every time before a big blessing came, some messing came first. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know before God dropped the bomb, you know, some bombs went off first. Is that right? So, 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 so you got to get to so you get to where you correlate that when the devil is attacking at the way he's attacking, that means that your that 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 that, that your breakthrough. Is right now. I got to come right now. So, so, so told me. He, he, he said, "Son, tell them." He said, "Tell them, don't break down, yes, sir, before your breakthrough." He told me to tell you this. He said, "Tell them." He said, "He said, tell them, I am still blessing you. Amen. Don't let the devil fool you." <laughs> Ooh -wee. Mm -hmm. If there was a title tonight, if I could tag this message, it would be, God is still blessing you. Don't let the devil fool you. <laughs> no, no, no. Notice here, I did not say God is still going to bless you. Because you may be still waiting on that big thing that you're waiting to happen, that big manifestation. But, but ma'am and sir, you're going to have to learn to rejoice in the little things, quote little things, that happen from the day to day. And I don't know, really, I, 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 know, I know we kind of say it all the time, but you got to get to where you start celebrating the fact that you're not in the cemetery. Amen. You, you're going to really, you're, I'm, I'm going to help somebody. You're going to really have to, to, get, to keep your joy up, you're going to really have to learn to start celebrating the fact that you're not in the hospital. Yes, yeah, yeah. See, you, you, I, I mean, really, you know, it, I, I, I say it right now. Some, some of me, I hope it'll go the wrong way, but I'm saying that. You got to start celebrating the fact that you're not in jail. Amen. Yeah. You're not strung out somewhere. Yeah. You're not homeless. I mean, yes, you know, I, I ain't putting, but I'm just saying, you got to see, you got to get to where you start actually counting your blessings. Yeah. Amen. Because if you count your blessings, you, you won't just be waiting on God to give you a blessing. You realize you're blessed right now. Yeah. And when that one comes, it just be another. Yeah, yeah. You know, that one because you, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 you want to trip out so much because you used to being blessed. Amen. Anybody used to being blessed? Yeah. And it used to be in blessed. You know, you know, you know, used to be in blessed. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Turn with me to um, Hebrews chapter 6. Amen, amen. Hebrews chapter 6, verse number 10. Yes, sir. The Lord told me to tell you, God is still blessing you. Don't let the devil fool you. Amen. Don't let what you see, feel, or hear make you forget what he said. He always keeps his word. Yeah. Don't break down before your breakthrough. I, I'm going to say this too. And it's been on me, but I, I've appreciated it already. Somebody threw it at me earlier. Uh, God has given you double for your trouble in right. 2022. For all you've been through in 2022, God has given you double for Hallelujah. all your trouble. Amen. Amen. 
Uh, uh, somebody have a receiver over here. Somebody have a receiver over here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 You receive say, Lord, Lord I, receive I receive double, double for all my trouble all my that, I that I went through in 2022. In, 2022. in fact, for the rest of 2022, I received double for all I went through. For the rest of 2022, I'm demanding nothing less than double for all I've been through. It's on its way. Now it's here. Yes, sir. See, this here. You got to see it. See, faith is not. See, no, no, it ain't because it's here. Say it's here. It's here. Yeah, I'm not trying to miss a job, but you're going to have to shift that mind. Because see, when you in future tense, you're in hope. Right. And when you're in hope, you just, uh, mm -hmm. well, maybe today is today. <laughs> but no, no, no. you in faith, right? Yes, sir. And faith is now. In fact, the Bible says, now. What did the Bible say? Now. now. Faith is now. now. So you believe. And see, and even though you may not see it materializing now, in mm -hmm. the spirit is already done. Yes, sir. All right, I, I'm, I'm going to go back to Isaiah 46 and 10, but it says God has already declared your ending from the beginning. Yeah. Therefore, he's not surprised at your trials and troubles. He knew they were coming before they came. Yeah. That's why he gave you the solution before the problem showed up. That's why when you pray, God ain't tripping you up. Right. Yeah. That, that's why when you're in the prayer closet crying, God ain't. <laughs> You know, because he sees the end at the beginning. Yeah, he, 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 the song just said, the, the song just said, the songwriter just sung, and, and, he, and he said that, that your problem going to end the way it should. God has a should way in on every situation. Boy, I want to throw this mic. God has already predetermined a should way. In other words, he already knows how it's going to stop. Amen. He already knows the day, the time, the minute, and the moment it's going to happen. But he wants you to believe that you got it before you see it. Amen. Amen. So God's rewarding your faithfulness. God's rewarding, amen, your dedication to him. God is giving you what he said he would. He's not lying. He ain't playing. He does what he says. Is God lied to anybody? No, no sir. Anybody, anybody ever did, did God didn't do what he said? Hmm. All right, all right, let me stick with my word. Whew. Hebrews 6. <laughs> Hebrews 6, thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Hebrews 6 and 10. And you got to amplify Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hebrews 6 and 10. Now watch this. Mm. Yes, sir. For God is not unjust so as to forget your work and the love which you have shown for his name. In ministering, that means helping people, in ministering to the needs of the saints, that includes praise, worship, that includes parking lot, that includes cutting your neighbor's yard, you know, that, that includes the nice deeds you do, but, but that's some specificity to it, too. He said, for his name, ministering to the needs of the saints, God's, pe God's people. So we got to get back to family first. That's a mess from out of there. See, 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 we, get, we bless the world if we bless our own. Mm. You know, the, the, the Bible said a man don't take care of his own house. Yeah. It's worse than an infidel. Mm. Is that right? Yes, sir. The, the Bible said the man don't take care of the kids under his own name. Right. It's worse than somebody that ain't saved. Mm -hmm. Well, hold on, watch this. Well, if we put the world system and we bless the folk in the world, if we bless the folk in the church. Mm. If my brother and sister sit next to me and I know they have need of something, I got two. Should I give them one? Yes, yes sir. Yes. We're going to talk about that a little later. We ain't, don't worry, I'm going to deal with it now. But there is a focus in this season. You got to get with your tribe. You got to start covering your brother and sister. Amen. Amen. So you got to realize where your help really coming from. Amen. Boy, boy, boy. Yeah, yeah. You're going to have to look in your circle and make sure that your circle is tight. And if they ain't tight, you bless them with what you got. And you do what you can to help them. Somebody said, what's my assignment, those, the folk in front of you? Amen. The people at your home church? What did God call me to do, the person in front of you? Amen. The one behind you? Amen. The one sitting there? Who, 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 who God want me to pray for? That one right there. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Pastor. See, see we got to get our attention back to the household of faith. Mm -hmm. If everybody, if the household of faith started putting the household of faith 
faith first when they bless people, they would get a greater return because it's like giving back to God. Amen. At the same time, you cause the, somebody in the household of faith to get their prayers answered. Amen. I'm not going to talk about it. That's been one of our points later on in the month. But we got to get back to this. You see, when, when, when I get my $10, mm -hmm. notice I ain't said million. Everybody, everybody going to give it. Everybody going to give it you know, 100000 when they get a million. You know, how many, but, you know, but, but are you doing a dollar on the 10? Mm -hmm. No, no, but don't ask. Don't ask. Now, now, so therefore, if you got an extra dollar to give out to 10, give it to somebody in the church. Come on. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. For God is not so unjust as to forget your work and the love which you have shown for his name in ministering to the needs of the saints, God's people. As you do, as you do. And we desire for each of you to show the same diligence all the way through so as to realize and enjoy the full assurance of hope until the end. Here's that kicker verse, verse 12. This is where a lot of people at. This is where you're at between the amen and the here it is. You know, the, no, no, hey, 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 this is the part when your blessing still like it's hung up in the spirit. You know, you know this is the part that if your blessing was associated with, with, with trying to get a good frequency or, 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 or a good read on, on, on a TV show, and you start adjusting the antenna, you know, you go, you, old days, you get a piece of foil and try to Make the signal come in. You know, you know, you know, in other words, if, if you can somehow adjust your circumstance in order for your blessing to manifest, this is what, this is it right here. This is the, this, this the adjustment. So that you will not spiritual, be spiritually sluggish, but instead be imitators of those who through faith lean on God and with absolute trust and confidence in Him by Patient endurance are inheriting the promises. King James Version is better. You inherit the promises of God through faith and, give me, give me King James, through faith and patience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You inherit the promises of God, thank you. Verse number two, let me do it on this one. That you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. How do you inherit the promises? You inherit the promises through what? Faith and patience. Faith and patience. patience. Now watch this. What's faith? Confidence in God. We, we, we're going to simplify, right? What's patience? Waiting on God. Waiting on God. Yeah. All right? So, so watch this. So watch this. So at this point in time, in your believing you receive from God, you're either at one or two places. Either on the faith side, I'm just believing. I ain't, I ain't wrapping my, my mind around it yet. I'm just trying to just believe God. I, I mean, I know, I know, or I know God going to do it. Yes. Like my brother was saying earlier, I, I think that's I know, I know, I know, I know what you meant. I know God got me, Amen. but I'm still just waiting on manifestation. And it's these two elements that are needed and necessary for us to receive and inherit the promises. Manifestation comes when these two are mixed properly and they, yes sir, and and when you're able, now here's the thing, when you're able to actually outlast the attack. Amen. See, 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 there are some attacks you can just whip out your swords in the name of Jesus. Right. You know, shun die. You know what I'm talking about? You know, the past few days and it's gone. You know what I'm talking about? But then there are some that linger. And, and these are those, of course, that's going to require a different spiritual energy. Normally, that spiritual energy is in the form of faith and patience. And faith and patience is a war that means it's almost like it's almost like a football. It's, it's almost like yeah, it's like like sport, like the sports. It's almost it's almost like a ball game where, where, where baseball used to have this habit. They would play good in the first half. <laughs> amen. Amen. <laughs> And, and, and everybody like, yeah, but you know, and everybody said, yeah, but the second half coming. And, and by third quarter, now it's down to a now it's down to a two point game, you know. And we sit in, and, and by fourth quarter, everybody biting their nails, watching, standing up watching TV, hoping that we ain't scored, we ain't scored since the first half. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But we're going like, and, and we're going race back. Just hold. Them. That's it. <laughs> just hang in there. And, hey. Just don't give up no more ground. Just don't quit where you at. Just hold 
fast to what you got. Don't let the devil take no more ground. In other words, if you just outlast the devil, then you'll win. Because guess what? Your problem got an expiration date. Yeah. It's been predetermined and already foreknown. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and, and so you can beat the devil through faith and patience by just pretty much just learning to outlast the devil. Now, what, is, what, what tactics does the devil use to, to try to get us to give up our faith and patience? Mm -hmm. Now, hear me now. What he, I ain't got to tell y'all this. Y'all already know. Y'all know what he does. Why are you waiting on God to bless? He's trying to wear you out. Uh, Daniel 7, Daniel chapter 7. Go to Daniel. That's 7, 25. Y'all know where we've been, we've been to Daniel in a minute. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. See, Satan's tactic is to keep you so distracted that you can't get any traction. Let me say that again. Satan's tactic is to keep you so distracted that you don't get no traction. He, he wants to hit you with everything. He wants to bombard you, amen, with different things going on all the time. He's not happy with, with just the transmission ain't shifting right. You know, he, he ain't happy with you staring at the dashboard trying to figure out what in the world is going on with this thing today. He, he's not happy with the bad mail, with the phone call. No, 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 no. He's going to bombard you because what he's trying to do is wear you out or wear you down. I like the Amplified here. Uh, Daniel 7, 25, I like this. It says, now watch this, and this is a prophetic, a prophetic uh, section there, and I challenge you to read it. There's some good stuff in it. In fact, man, if y'all knew the prophetic time that we live in regarding what God is doing, amen, amen, spiritually speaking, you know, and, 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 and then when you begin, and we'll talk about it later. I want to jump out. Let's not jump in there. But you're in a season that God is doing some super duper super, supernatural. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, you're in a season right now that if you hold on and believe, God is really going to blow your mind. Amen. Amen. We're in a season. Well, no, hear me, please hear me now. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Hear me, please hear me. We are in a season right here and now that if you just hold on to what God said and believe with all your heart, man, woman, I'm telling you, He's going to blow your mind. Yeah. He's going to trip you out. Like that brother that had them cancers. And them three days. What happened, man? Went in and thought said what? He said there was three nights, uh, three masses on my liver. And you prayed over me. And I came back 12 days later. And I said there was nothing there. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants to blow your mind. Amen. Amen. Now, this somebody had a financial big one, too. Some big financial stuff as well. Amen. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I, I, I can put everybody on French, but, but, but what I'm saying, okay, what I'm saying, I don't know what it is. See what I'm saying? What I'm saying? He don't want everybody to know he got their money, even though know, the household of faith may, 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 may. But, 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 no, no, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Please, 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 please hear me. We are in a season that God is honoring His word and manifesting His blessings in miraculous, marvelous, and let me say this too, very rapid, quick ways. The blessings are happening overnight. They're happening at a twink of an eye. What I'm saying, you can be in one situation and in dire straits at one point, and then one phone call, one text, one trip to the mailbox, one knock, at the door, you, you know, and all of a sudden, everything that you worried about for years is completely eradicated and taken care of. Hallelujah. This is the season. This is why you got to keep your faith. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is why you, this is why you can't afford to give up. Mm -hmm. You can't afford to quit because God is rewarding his people in this season. Amen. Come on, Pastor. But watch this. But the devil wants to wear you out and make you quit and give up on God. He, he wants you to believe that God's word don't work. The devil's biggest thing is trying to talk you into not believing that God's going to do what he said. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, so this is what he does. Daniel 7, 25. It says, talking about the devil now. He will speak words against the most high. Talking about God. Look what it says. And wear down the... Mm. The devil wants to wear you down and wear you out. How does he do that? By getting your mind caught up in everything 
but God's word and God's will. How do you keep a man or a woman from doing God's will? Give them something else to do. And the devil will have you fixing washing machines, which you should be at work. He, 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 he have you working on stuff you ain't got no business fooling with. He, he'll have you doing stuff on the side and, and all around you ain't got no business doing. It's not, not a bad thing. It's not a God thing. Because what the devil is trying to do, hear me now. Man, I pray you hear me. He's trying to keep you distracted so you can't get no traction in your faith. He, he, he's trying to keep you at a place to where you're not balanced and you're teeter-tottering and, 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 and he's trying to keep you from, from, from standing fast and strong on what God said. He's trying to attack your mind. He's trying to wear you down. He's trying to wear you out. Yes, sir. In fact, look what it says. It says, he will speak words against the most high God. And he will wear down the saints. Boy, this is good here. And he will intend to change the times and the law. Stop for a second. Why is the devil trying to wear you down and wear you out? Because the devil knows how blessed you are more than you do. Mm -hmm. The reason why the devil attacks you is not because of who you are. It's who you're about to become. Let me say that again. The reason why the devil been attacking you the way he's been attacking you because he's scared you're going to mess around and find out who the real you are. To. He don't want you to find out. He, he's attacking your God-given identity. And you walking around here thinking you're just little old so-and-so, so-and-so. Mm -hmm. The reason why the devil is attacking you because he knows the real you. And he does not want that potential to become real power. So therefore, so therefore, so therefore, he will intend to change the. He, he know he knows the times. He will intend, he will intend to change the times and the law. Mm -hmm. It's laws going on right now. Then it's not a thing. But y'all know there's a there's a big shift going on in that country. And, and and really, we're coming down to a to a to a point in time when Christianity and this worldly system, and we're going to ask ourselves. Who said you on? Uh-huh. Look at your name. Who said you really on? Until I tell in a minute. And it's not a bad thing. It, it's just something that's already been promised. And the devil knows if he can wear you down and wear you out, it's going to be easier to pull you out and get you on the wayside. He, he says, he said that the devil will, I'm sorry, and he will, and yeah, I'm with the devil though. He will intend to change the times and the law, and they will be given into his hand for a time. Because the devil does have leasehold interest in the earth. He is the power of the prince of the air. You see outside right now? You know why it's getting dark? Because the devil is the landlord. See, in heaven ain't no darkness. It don't get dark in heaven. You know, and I say the devil is the landlord because Adam, when he sinned, he gave up his leasehold interest in the earth. See, God gave the earth to Adam. So Adam do whatever, you know, once somebody gives you a gift, they can do what they want to do with it, right? But what Adam did when he got the gift, the devil said, now nah, nah, I get the earth. So he went and distracted, deceived Adam. And when he deceived Adam, he now became, uh, he, he now gained the, the leasehold interest. Lease being has, has permission to occupy, but for a period of time. Because every lease agreement, has an expiration date. Y'all don't hear me. Every lease agreement has a time when they got to move out. Because God ain't renewing this lease. And, 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 when, and when it's time to and when it's time for them to leave, if they don't leave, we evict them. Some of y'all have been playing the devil too long. It's time to evict the devil. Some of y'all, it's not a matter of it's not a matter of, of, of patience. It's not, it's not a matter, it's a matter of faith and patience. It's a matter of evicting that monkey right now. Devil. Say, devil. Devil. I fix you. I fix you right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Sickness. Sickness. Infirmity. Infirmity. Cancer. Cancer. Get. Get. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. 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 Thank
so much. You gotta serve some, you gotta serve some papers. Yes. Amen. You say you serve the papers with your tongue. Okay, all right. So he knows, he knows, and the devil knows this. He knows that his time is short. That's why he be tripping, y'all. That's why he mad like he is. Look what it says. And they will be given into his hand for a time. That's the least hope. Two times and half a time and three, one and a half years. We'll explain that later, but go with me to my last scripture. Is it 703? Go with me to Galatians chapter 6. Right, thank you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. and keep in mind, of course, what we preach. Don't let what you see, feel, or hear make you forget what he said. Amen. Amen. Make, make you forget what God said. Don't break down before your breakthrough. Mm -hmm. God is still blessing you. Don't let the devil fool you. Galatians chapter 6. I'm going to close with this. Galatians chapter 6. Now watch this. Uh, verse number 9. Because remember, we win the battle or we receive, we already won, but you get the manifestation through faith and patience. In some cases, should we just evicted them? But in some cases, it's just a matter of outlasting. It's a matter of maintaining your joy while you go through. Amen. Okay? And joy, joy is not just laughter. Hear me now. Joy is a spiritual force that preserves you. Let me say that again. It's not just laughter. You know, unlike happy, joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. So therefore, it's needed and necessary to preserve you while you're going through tough times. Amen. Joy will have you laughing while you're going through hell. Amen. And, and, and joy is not predicated on circumstances. Joy is always predicated on the presence of God in your life. Amen. Yeah, I, I can tell when you've been with God. Because when you got joy, you reek it. So I know what I'm talking about. I say reeking on this side. kind of holy. Because <laughs> yeah, 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 see, when you got joy, that means you've been in the presence of the Lord. Yes. Yeah. That's, why, that's why Nehemiah 8 and 10 says, The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. See, the joy of the Lord gives you strength to maintain while you wait no manifestation. Amen. And you got to learn how to stir up joy. You got to learn how to maintain joy. Now, I'm not talking about just be happy. Because happy is based on happenstance. I'm talking about you're going to have to learn how to, uh -uh, you got to catch yourself. What's wrong with me? What, what am I thinking about? I know I ain't tripping. I'm not tripping. Hold up, devil, you's a lie. See, and you got to start talking. Ooh, boy. You cannot exercise spiritual warfare in silence. You got to speak. You got to say it. You got to speak it. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Say, devil. Devil. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There you go. Oh, yeah. And you got to tell him that. And see, and when he gets used to hearing you say that, he's going to start moving quicker. And then all of a sudden, you walk in rooms and places, and you see, oh, that's the devil. That's the devil. Get out of here! Yeah. Amen. He came up in and got down. He gonna duck his tail around. Amen. Oh. Amen. So watch this. Because we recognize it's the devil, we refuse to get weary. The devil's trying to get. You. So when you feel weariness coming, you're gonna have to do some things. I, I don't have time to talk about that tonight. We maybe go. We gotta pick up on our navigating the new on on on, uh, on Sunday. We're going to pick up point number two, I think, on navigating the new season. Navigating the number two is going to bring us into some of that. Um, but, but you're going to have to do some mental methods in order to, yes, sir, you're going to have to do some mental maintenance in order to maintain your joy. Okay, you, 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 have, to, you have to control your thoughts in order, in order not to get weary. And, 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 and weariness is a form of worry. So the devil wants you worried. 
If he can get you in the habit of being worried, and now watch this. Worry means fear. If he can get you in the habit of being scared, if he can get you to where you don't realize that, that worry and fear is bad, is of the devil. Worry and fear is of the devil. God, okay, first, don't turn to it. First Timothy 1.7 says, God did not give us but of love and sound mind. You see, hey, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of sound mind. Now watch this. When, when I'm in fear and worry, then guess what? I don't have a sound mind. And the devil loves me to make a bad decision while I'm going through some weary moments. He'll, he'll love for me to, rea to be reactive to some present day mess, you know, knowing that it's going to affect my tomorrow. Alright, so we we talk about that later. Amen. But look at it. So 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 as we get to the, give me give me some music, I'm gonna close. You know, you know, back in man, I can play piano, I walk over there and play piano. <laughs> as I close, I walk over there and just kinda okay. Let us not grow weary, collection <laughs> six, nine, and ten. Let us not grow weary or become just music, no words. Let us not become let us not grow weary or become discouraged in doing good. For the proper time, see, there we go again. There's a time, see. If you, you gotta get hold of that. See, trouble don't last always, it's not just a cliche. There's an expiration time on all trouble. All right, it says, it says, yeah. Or become discouraged in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap if we do not give in. I like what it says in the King James, if we do not faint. But watch this. Now watch this. Go back to this ending. Now watch this. The other principle coming up again. Talking about the household of faith. I'm trying to warn you. Look what it says. So then, while we as individual believers have opportunity, have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, not only being helpful, but also doing that which promotes their spiritual well-being. Look what it says. And especially be a blessing to those of the household of faith. Mm. There it is again. Now the scripture says in the mouth of two of the witnesses, let every word be a I think God trying to say something. Amen. You see, a lot of people don't realize but your surplus is somebody else's need. Yeah. Yeah. What you got in your pocket that's more than enough for you is what somebody else needs for them. And while I'm on that, it's offering time. Mm -hmm. It's offering time. It's offering time. You can give by way of Cash App, Remnant C. You can give by way of Give La Five, Remnant Church, Little Rock. You can give by way of Remnant Church, Little Rock. Amen. At Yahoo.com on, on the website, on the PayPal. So at any rate, of course, you can mail your offering also to 11715 Rainwood Road, Suite A1, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72212.